Now we're going to go into the origins of pot potpourri. And I'm going to like just manually show you how to do it. And then you can take notes. I have the material here. Um, so the origins of pot potpourri, and it's going to be from an article, The Sweet Smell of Plague and Preservatives. So read along with me if you want. So pot potpourri wasn't introduced until the late 16th century, and it wasn't exactly what we think of today. The name literally means rotten pot. Aromatics were collected fresh in the spring, then layered between the sheets of salt to ferment in perforated ceramic containers for several years. So but we're not gonna do that. We're just saying how it was. Um, this is what modern pot potpourri makers call the moist method and it tends to mold. So molding wasn't seen as a problem at the time though, provided it was sweet smelling mold, which fresh citrus slices were intentionally used to get the sticky, sweet, moldy smell. So we're just going to use like essential oils and things like that. Pot potpourri was created more to ward off moths than for the plague, but it was employed as one during the reemerence of the illness with the great plagues. So that kind of has something to do with what's going on today. Miasma theory was still going strong and these were the pungent aromatics at hand. And just about every smelly thing that has grown in Europe has ended in the pot potpourri at one time or another. But what sets pot potpourri apart from earlier plague preservatives is the luxury. These were opulent times kept in beautiful ceramics in the home. And often it included exotic ingredients like orris root, cinnamon, saffron, and clove. These prestigious items were often both lavish and produced and imported from afar. Your average granny would not have a dish of pot potpourri casually sitting on a side table at this time. Miasma was a concept existed since at least ancient Greece, but it took on new dimensions with the Black Death. Miasma theory holds that particles of rotten matter are released into the air, especially at night by refuse and decomposing bodies. A small number of miasmas are present even in the freshest of airs. However, should one breathe in too much of the supposed purified vapor, one's body would be infested and decomposition will become ill. So, I mean, kind of like why we're wearing masks today because the plague, so it's kind of, that's why I picked it so we can learn how to protect ourselves spiritually and physically. Um, the only way to ward off ones against the bad air was through preservation. Um, those preservations were both physical and spiritual. One aspect of preservation took the form of symbolic aromatics that were the thought to both physically remove the elusive and also serve from a spiritual intercession. This was reinforced not only in Christian though, but in an ancient myth. Miasma in Greek mythology is a sentient cloud of vapor that brought pestilence to a city until unreprinted wrongdoers was sacrificed. No amount of cleaning would remove it without this cosmic retribution. The lineage affected the physiological response to the plague. So this is just an example of um, the basis back then that the potpourri was in. Let me show you a few things that I have. So here's my table. So we have um, some rows here, some pots, flower pots, some carnations, some stems from the carnations, flower, some other large pods that I grabbed from the forest, some sticks from a local establishment that I grabbed. These are some dead pods and just some dead little flowers. Some licorice root um, and some essential oils that we're gonna use with the licorice root to preserve the, the scent. Here's a sachet bag that we can use like for personal protection. And like a, an altar that I have here that I take with me um, when I go on the road, if I'm going in the community, 
Dresser. There I have some pumpkin, some ginger, um, some apple, star anises, whole allspice, chamomile, and cinnamon. So these are just some of the ingredients that I'll be using today. Oh, and one more thing in the corner there. You can see the air fryer that we'll be putting the material in. Now, as we go through this, I'll just be telling like a little story, a practical story of like our everyday things that are going on and things that I've experienced, and why this is necessary. So I got this dish from the Dollar Tree. It's a, just like a leaf. That I want to use. I just thought it was pretty. Um, so you get your dish right here. So I got this is like just a mini air fryer. This is going to be used to dehydrate the materials that we use for the pot potpourri. And it just takes maybe a minute or so. So I'm just going to put some of these carnations in here. And just line them up. This one could be for our rose and forest potpourri, if you will. And we got some Pods here, flower pods. These are not yet ready to go and flourish yet. And then we have some dead pods. These we don't have to put in the fryer yet. In here. For a few minutes, it doesn't take long. And then in the meantime, we can put other things in here while those are prepared. Um, I have some flowers that I, I used to make some rose water, but I just kind of took out the water and just left flowers. Throw those, some of those in there. Um, pots. Basically, anything that you want to mix in there that you feel is appropriate for the season or, you know, how you're feeling at that moment. Here is just some sticks. So just kind of add your own mixture while these other flowers get prepared. Here's some pots. These don't look like they rot, so they stay pretty sturdy. And some stems. Those that these stems I'm putting in, these were the actual stems from the carnations. So I just kind of like broke them up. So I'm gonna show you. you can show some oils while that works. Here's some Yingling oil, southern lights and blue spruce, patchouli, whatever oils you have on hand or whatever you like to smell and can use. Um, those are a little bit more high priced ones, but if you don't have those on hand, you could just use the ones that you can put just like in a regular diffuser just to have some aroma in the room. And I have the licorice root, but you can also use uh, another root that you feel that you don't want to work with. And with this, just on here.
So we use some lingering on here. This root is just to preserve the smell, like an extended smell, so it doesn't like go away at the same time you put it in. You could just like pull it right in here. So now the flowers are ready to go. Just like look in there, they kept the color and they're still green, so you can just throw them right in here. I got this bouquet of flowers at Walmart and it was just like $5. So everything here is um, very inexpensive. You just go into your, your local woods or in your front yard, wherever you know, you'd like and just pick up some materials to use. The pots still stay green. Even if they fell on the floor, they're still green. And you can put them in the oven, but it takes a little bit longer, so the air fryer is faster. Yeah. I found some, some bark. And some trees, so I'm just going to throw some of those in here. And a few stems. So this one is done. As you can see. Um, we have one for Halloween, for the autumn. This one, I mean, you can still add the flowers for this. Just didn't want to get too much going. So here we have the white pumpkin. So I just cut it and then clean the inside. And here it is kind of cut up. I cut them last night so they're already a little bit dried out. We can just put them in here. For a few minutes. And this is some garlic. I mean, not garlic, some ginger. Throw those in there too. And some apple. These apples, I mean, it's up to you. When I tried putting them in there, they're still a little bit soft. So these do like get rotten. Um, but if you want to try it out, you can. I think the pumpkin kind of stayed a little bit more preserved. What I did here with the one that's already made, I kind of just made like a little bit like a formation with the pumpkin. We put some cinnamon sticks in there, some star anise, but we'll, we'll do that again. So here's some cinnamon sticks I just got from the store. We had actually had it in the cutter. Cinnamon, some chamomile. Did the screen change? Okay. So here's some. 
Let's check the air product. Everything looks good here. So we can see here, this is the apple, the ginger. It's kind of hot, so you gotta be careful when you take it out. They had the pumpkins, um, the small ones at Walmart for like three or four dollars a bag. Let's see if you can grab those. Here. We just cut up one of them. We got some whole allspice. That's about it. I can add some flowers. One. And that's it. Let's see. There you go. So pretty simple to make, just what you have at home. Um, there's an altar that I prepared. I'll give you an example of how you want to use it. Move it over here. So here's the one with the flowers. You can put some of these stems on the side here. I put my cold roll and some scrolls in there. There's a little flower, there's a little candle. There's one of the other pumpkins, some crystals. So you could just go ahead and put this potpourri on your altar. And just have a little statue here. Um, and I guess nowadays and we're going to be using this like in a practical use just for spiritual and physical protection. You can throw these potpourri, this potpourri in the little, I have some little, little ladies here and they have their little sachets. You could go ahead and just, I used to just, you could put the fragrance on them and just mix them up in the potpourri, put them in a little bag, put it in your, in your purse, put it around your neck. I don't know, currently we see this all the time in the news, there's people lining up for food, they're hungry, it's the plague. So they're going through all these difficulties. Next screen. Um, when I was working, maybe a few months back, I I stopped working. I I was put like by myself. But when I was out in the streets, working with the homeless, just like this, I would come home, and I would still have that smell on me on my clothes, just from being, you know, with them. Um, they haven't bathed, they haven't washed their clothes. They're just sleeping in the streets. So I was just always among amongst them, maybe a few hours a day, three or four hours. Um, and my clothes would smell like really bad. Even if I washed them two or three times, the clothes it just wouldn't come off. I still kind of smell it now and it's been months since I've been out there. So what I used to do, like I showed, I had like the little altar with me and I had these little sachets. Um, I had like a little medicine bag that Victoria made for us. I think it was like last year. So I would take those with me. So I guess that's how I was a few months back with my clothes. I just kept washing them, buying new clothes. The smell wouldn't go away. 
There we go. So we had like, I show you the little sachets. So I used to keep them in my purse when I was out there. And like, I was like, the smell would just get like too much. I would like smell it. So I could kind of continue to work and not, you know, make faces around people and make them feel uncomfortable. Um, so here's another one you can put like around your neck. I mean, we go out there now we don't really see what's going on because they don't show us, but if you were going on to the city and you're out during the day, you would see these people in line waiting for food. Most people are working, they don't see it, but if you did, you would see that you can see it. So it's a spiritual matter now, more and a physical, but we just don't see it because nobody wants to show it. But this is the times that we're, the current quarantine times we're dealing with. So this is just an example of an altar that I just did, and another altar. If you want to make your potpourri and store it, you can. Um, these little containers here, you can buy at the dollar store and just put, put it in there and keep it for later. And I think that's it with that. Um, so that's pretty much the presentation.